Oh, hello, everybody. Um, my name is Yolanda Madison, and I'm a member of the associate board um, for the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless. Um, I would just like to encourage people to have their cameras on if you feel like it um, and to participate, um, whether that is in the chat, raising your glass, or if we have time for sharing personal stories. Um, I also want to thank the Knight Ministry and Good Government Illinois for co-sponsoring and helping to get the word out. So um, let's have a look, let's play a little game. So um, raise your glass if you had a good day today. All right, nice. Um, raise your glass if you're glad it's Thursday. Raise your glass if you like Kenny Loggins. Yeah. Uh, raise your glass if you're excited about voting. Uh, raise your glass if you've ever paid more than $750 in taxes in a single year. All righty. So, um, like I said, I'm on the associate board for CCH, and CCH is the only nonprofit in Illinois that's dedicated to advocating for public policies that are dedicated to um, help us um, go in the right direction toward ending homelessness. So we get help from many different people from many different perspectives and all their special abilities come together to help uh, add something special to the team. This includes community members like myself and community organizers, homeless leaders, public policy specialists, um, and legal aid attorneys. So the associate board is a group of volunteers that are responsible for fundraising. So some of the fun things that we do all the time include Riot Fest. Um, I was at Riot Fest last year. It was tons of fun um, to sell raffle tickets for amazing prizes. And you get to meet lots of people and you get to see bands if you feel like it, but it was just tons of fun to go. We also have an event called Cheers for Change, which is an event where we have guest bartenders um, competing and all of the tips go to um, help CCH and of course the place that we have the event at. Um, so that's a really fun way if you have any kind of friendly rivalry at work, between friends, that kind of thing to get that friendly aggravation out. Um, and when things are better, when before COVID, we would do the Cubs game once a year. That's so sad. But we try to keep up um, the work while under these circumstances. So we have actually had a virtual wine tasting and we are planning a virtual variety show. So be on the lookout for that. So I've been a member of the associate board for a little over a year. Um, it's been a ton of fun. And I think it's important for all of us to realize that each of us is capable of doing something that changes things for the good. So, okay, so what we're doing today, we're gonna be talking about the fair tax item number one on the ballot. So um, I personally am a fan of the idea of a fair tax because I thoroughly believe that the distribution of wealth is very skewed and I absolutely believe that the wealthy people should pay more taxes. Um, the services for homeless, um, for the homeless are woefully underfunded in Chicago. So this is a great opportunity to make the tax income, the income tax just more reasonable and we could, it could generate funds that we could possibly get our hands on for our cause. So um, we do invite questions from the audience and we uh, encourage you to either enter them into the chat or you can save them until the end. So with that being said, next up is Jai. All right, thank you so much, Yolanda. That was great. Hi everyone, how are you today? My name is Jai. I'm from Blue Island and for the past six weeks, I've been calling registered voters about the fair tax. As a canvasser with CCH, I'm also a grassroots leader with the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless. I'm going to be talking about the fair tax and some misconceptions. That's a lot of information, so I want you to pay attention to the key points that I'll be talking about. One of the first key points will be, what is the fair tax? Fair tax is fighting to get people who make millions of dollars each year to pay their fair share. So money can go back into schools and struggling neighborhoods. All Illinoisans pay a flat rate of 
95% already. It's unfair for those who make more money to pay the same rate as those who can afford it. It will only affect the top 3%, everyone making $250,000 or more. Everyone else will see their taxes, taxes either stay the same or go down. The next key point I'm going to be talking about is what isn't the fair tax. First, we know some people are hearing nothing but bad things in TV commercials, but, nothing, but not everything you see on TV is true. Those commercials are actually being paid for by millionaires and billionaires who don't want to pay their fair share. Second, this isn't a fight between Democrats and Republicans. This is about getting money back to people who really need it. People like myself, as I was formerly home homeless for the last three years. Third, some, some individuals think that once they say yes to fair tax, politicians will raise taxes on everybody, but the government can already do this. What this would do is take money from those who earn a lot and put into neighborhoods that need it. Wow, that was a lot of information. So I'm going into my second key point here. How will the fair tax affect the homeless population? Most homeless individuals are making less than $16,000 a year and they are paying this 4.9 flat rate. That's the same rate as millionaires and billionaires, but they can't afford it. The fair tax would help them save more money each year and prepare for a better future. It's not fair for someone who can't afford it to be expected to pay it when it's a drop in a bucket for someone who can't afford it. When the fair tax passes, it will raise a shocking $3 billion a year that could be invested in our communities, like homeless prevention, emergency shelters, and affordable housing. These services are vital for everyone experiencing homelessness, but they can't, but they currently do not get enough funding to support everyone. I know that was a lot of information, everyone. Thank you for listening, and I'm going to pass it on to Sam, who's going to talk about the history of the tax structure in Illinois. Thank you, Jai. Can everyone hear me? All right. Um, I'm Sam Moody. My pronouns are she, her, and I'm a member of the CCH Associate Board. So as we talk about the governor's fair tax proposal, it's important to remember that this is not a new way to tax our incomes. In 2020, 41 states are currently levying income taxes. <laughs> Quick quiz moment here. How many states do you all think have a flat income tax, including Illinois currently? Um, we have a poll up. So, The correct answer is nine. So nine states, uh, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Michigan, Colorado. Oh, most people got it right. Uh, Utah, Kentucky, Massachusetts, North Carolina, and Illinois currently levy flat income taxes. So of the 41 states with income taxes, 32 of them levied graduated income taxes this year. And of those 32 states, 29 or 70% impose graduated income tax rates with different brackets, which is what Illinois would be implementing. So it's important to realize Illinois is asking its taxpayers to implement an income rate structure that already exists and works throughout 70% of our country. So this idea is nothing new or radical. So why are we trying to implement this now? Well, Illinois flat income tax was signed into law in 1969 with a flat tax rate of 2.5%. At the time, the state had a deficit over about $1 billion, which was a lot then, but is laughable compared to where we are now. Uh, while it passed through the state legislature, there was a fight. So when the Illinois Constitution was adopted, no one wanted to mess around with the tax rate again. Um, quick quiz, when was the Illinois Constitution adopted? Uh, I don't know if there's a poll for this one, but you can shout it out or type it in the chat. Ooh, Lindsay, so close. Uh, it is 1970, so just about a year after the flat tax was implemented. So now in 2020, our state is struggling with large budget deficits, significant unfunded pension liabilities, and a multi-billion dollar bill backlog. Uh, and now our state government has to think of new revenue ideas to help fill these gaps, which have only become more dire during a global pandemic, obviously. 
Some do worry that the fair tax will drive people out of our state. Uh, however, income taxes are historically not a reason for residents to leave a state or an incentive to move to a state. More common driving factors include job transfers, job offers, being closer to family or housing costs. Uh, in addition, when we look at cities and states where former Illinois residents have relocated to, like St. Louis, Minneapolis, Atlanta, and the state of Wisconsin, all of these places tax most income brackets at higher rates than what Illinois is proposing. Uh, there are obviously exceptions to this, including Indiana, which has a flat tax that is already lower than Illinois. Um, However, we have yet to see the entire population of Indiana or of Illinois move to Indiana, so I think we're good for now. As we think about this tax further, it's also important to recognize our state is far from financially sound, struggling over the past decades with fiscal issues and obviously mismanagement. We uh, have a history of a little bit of corruptness. <laughs> However, this fair tax is a part of bringing back that financial management and responsibility. So the rates for each income bracket have already been approved by state legislature. You'll see a graph later from Brandon on that and cannot be adjusted on a whim. Most ratings agencies are also counting on Illinois to pass this fair tax for the sake of our own viability. Illinois' credit rating is one notch from junk and our credit outlook was recently adjusted by two ratings agencies from stable to negative. So we are in the worst possible situation of any state in the country at the moment. <laughs> Uh, ratings agencies have alluded to likely downgrades if the state cannot bring in this extra revenue from a fair tax and a non investment grade rating from the state would significantly hurt us in the long run. So as CCH continues to advocate for the fair tax over the next month and you all maybe discuss it more with friends and family as especially as they see it on the ballot too, the way our flat tax has only worsened our state's income inequality and racial wealth gaps cannot and should not be overlooked. The Institute on Taxation and Economic Policy recently published a report um, in September where they examined this further, finding that our flat income tax, in lieu of a graduated income tax used by most states, amounts to essentially a tax subsidy for the wealthiest Illinoisans. So I'm going to pull up a graph for you all right now really quick. Screen share. Okay. So you should be able to see that screen. So the study also includes um, what should be an alarming statistic, which is most recent data shows that Illinoisans in the bottom 20% of earners, so making less than 21% annually, they pay a little over 14% of their incomes in state and local taxes. While the top 1% of our earners in the state, so making over $537,000 annually, pay only 7.4% of their income in taxes. So this is called the fair tax because it hardly seems fair our state's low income earners are carrying the burden of income tax revenue for our state. And this is why it is very important for us to vote yes in support of this constitutional amendment on the ballot. Thank you all. I'm now going to pass it over to Brandon. And we also have an informational document with some of the resources with sources um, that were cited throughout that um, that we'll share at the end. Great. Um, thanks, Sam. And thanks, Jai, for the presentation so far. Uh, my name is Brandon. I use he, him pronouns. I'm an organizer at the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless and am excited to be talking about fair tax. I'm going to share my screen. Um, great. Um, so we are going to be diving in a bit more of what it's going to take for a fair, to win a fair tax and thinking about what I, is going to happen when we win a fair tax. And I also am going to warn everyone uh, that so far there's been a lot of information, but I'm now going to be asking for more participation. And I'm looking forward to hearing uh, from some of the folks on the line, on, on the call. And if you're watching the live stream on Facebook, feel free to just drop any answers or comments in uh, the comment section there. So great. Um, let's move on to the first question that I'm hoping to hear from. So first, can everyone raise your glass if you or a loved one has ever needed something from uh, your community, from a school, uh, from a government and hasn't been able to get it? Yeah. 
I know that I have. Uh, can I, uh, I'd love to hear from one or two folks about um, what that was. Uh, if you'd be willing to share, feel free to um, raise your hand, um, unmute yourself, uh, put it in the chat. I can. Yeah, great. Uh, so I'm Holly, and it's funny, um, I'm judging my answer because it has a lot of privilege in it. So I, I guess I just want to own that. Um, when I was in fifth grade, they moved fifth grade from junior high back to elementary school. And like mine was the first class that got impacted by that in public schools here in, in, in the burbs of Chicago. And uh, they didn't have like a curriculum for us because it was like a quick transition and it hadn't been in that school. And so like my mom had a whole conversation about how we weren't learning anything and she didn't like the answer. And so she actually pulled me and moved me to a, a private school, which um, like I can only, I'm just thinking now, like people who didn't have the luxury to do that, I wonder how that year was for students there. And that's not even as devastating as a lot of things that someone could need from a school or a community. But it was, it was hard for us at the time and it was, um, probably something that like could have been planned for, you know? Yeah, thanks for sharing, Holly. Uh, and I'm sure that there are a lot of other people um, who are not as courageous to share their stories about what they haven't been able to get when they needed it um, because the state's been underfunded. So uh, if we're gonna be voting and talking about voting on the fair tax, I want you guys to actually be able to see what it's going to say. And so fair tax is the first question. Um, in the November election. It's before you even um, vote for president. And so this is what it says right here. And this is what it will say on your ballot, uh, is that the proposed amendment grants the state authority to impose higher income tax rates on higher income levels. And if you go down more, it, it sort of repeats that and says it again, that it gives the state the ability to impose higher tax rates on those with higher income levels and lower tax rates on those with middle or lower income levels. And so that's exactly what it's doing. And it does this by eliminating the required current requirement that Sam talked about in the Constitution, that there only be one income tax at a time. Um, and so I just want to make sure that no one skips this when you see it, because as a hint and a warning, it does not say fair tax on your ballot, um, which is why we always say that you're pledging to vote yes on the first question for a fair tax, um, because that's what it's going to be. But great. So now I want to talk about what happens when, if, if and when a fair tax hopefully passes. The legislature has already passed what the new tax brackets are going to be, and I'm putting them up on the screen for you right now so you can actually see them. And so as you can see, um, so 4.95% is the current income tax rate. Uh, so for we're looking at single filers. Uh, for folks that make above $250,000, that rate goes up. Uh, if it's between 100 and 250, that rate stays the same. And if it's below $100,000, the rate goes down. And in addition to these rate changes, uh, the bill that would go into effect would also expand the property tax credit from 5 to 6% and implement a child tax credit of up to $100 per child. And so that's what happens. Um, a lot of people are spreading a lot of misinformation or insinuations about what might or could happen, but this is what's actually happening. And it's already been passed and already been signed by the governor. Great. So that brings me to the hope. The hope about this is that this is this means investment for our communities. Uh, and that's what I started talking about is this is more than $3 billion a year that this is going to raise. Like if you can think about something in your community that needs more funding, raise your glass. I can. Throw some out. Um, if the state had more funding, what are some ways our community could change? Where would you want to see that money invested? Feel free to shout it out, put it in the chat. Claire, uh, Claire chatted the uh, most obvious one, homelessness, affordable housing. <laughs> uh, I think we could all probably say mental health services too, especially throughout Chicago. Yeah, absolutely. Um, clearly, there are a lot of things in our communities that we would love to see funded. I've seen a lot of public schools, rent support, care for addiction, bike lanes. 
Great. So clearly this, this more funding, this opportunity could be transformative uh, for Illinois, for our communities and for communities across Chicago and across the state. And so that brings me to what it's going to take to pass the fair tax. So it's, it's not as easy as just winning an election when all you need is a simple majority of the people that vote in your race. Uh, it's actually harder to pass a constitutional amendment uh, in Illinois. And there's two ways that we can do that. The first is that we need 60% of people that vote on the specific ballot measure itself to vote yes. Uh, and so that means that anyone who skips it doesn't count, uh, which brings us to the second way, which is a majority of every person voting in the election. So that means every single person that shows up to vote, 50% plus one. Um, and so great, there's a lot of work that's gonna need to be done. I can't make myself responsible, okay. Um, I think someone forgot to put themselves on mute. Great, um, happens all the time. So that's what it's gonna take and that's not gonna be easy. Um, and polls show that it's close, which is why it's important for all of us to come together to make this happen. Which brings me to my next question, which is, what are some actions that you can take to ensure that the fair tax ballot measure passes? Um, I'd love to just open that up for discussion. If you feel comfortable, you can unmute yourself and talk. If you wanna raise your hand again, called on, that's okay. Or also like usual, put in the chat. Yeah. Wow. There's so many ideas. Um, I'm seeing talk to your friends and family, inform friends and family, ask friends and family to vote. I'm seeing a theme here. Phone bank, text everyone you know in Illinois, text and phone bank, make a TikTok. That is um, for someone with more social media and technological skills than I have. Yeah. Wow. Exactly. Basically what I think the theme of this is, is there's a lot you can do to get out the word uh, and to let people know, um, about the fair tax and about what it's gonna mean for you and what it'll mean for your community and other people in your community. Uh, and to talk about some of those next steps and action items, I wanna pass it back to Yolanda who's been chairing the meeting. All righty, hello everybody. So next steps are action steps. So we have a pledge form that we would love for you to uh, fill out for us. But before you do that, please raise your glass if you're going to vote for the fair tax. Beautiful. So this is the, the fair tax pledge form we'd love for you to fill out for us, just so we can get an idea of how many people are on board. And when you fill this out, you feel a little bit more committed to it and you want to tell your friends and your families about it. Um, also, there is a volunteer form. Um, for some volunteering events to help get the word out. And then someone said a phone bank, right? We have our first fair tax friend bank on October the 8th. So this is a way for you to get the word out to your friends and family. You can select which ones, you don't have to give them to everybody in your, your phone, but you can just select which ones you think would love to hear about this information. Um, so, I guess now is the time. Let's fill out this pledge form and start taking questions. I've got a question. Um, I wonder if anybody knows if the three billion dollars, the three point four billion dollars um, that we that would expect to be raised from the Fair Tax Act. Do we know already how it's been earmarked? Whether it's for social services or for pensions or for anything else? What do we know about how they're already thinking about parsing that out? That's a, a great question. Uh, I'm happy to take that one. So the funding that would come in from the fair tax of $3 billion would be just general funds. They have not been allocated yet. And so basically the way that we see it um, at CCH in terms of organizing around this is that step one is getting a fair tax passed so that our state has enough money to function. And step two is going back to fight to make sure that money goes to the places that really need it. And we uh, would love for everyone on this call to be a, not only a part of getting the fair tax passed, but also coming back and making sure that it does go where it's needed. Um, and that legislatures and Springfield can hear our voices win um, if we get the chance to allocate all that money as well. Thank you.
Don't be shy, guys. We're here for any questions, concerns. I've got one. Sure. Wait, because this is like all questions now, right? With like, we're at that point. We are at that point. Okay. So I know, so Fairtax got it on board. Are there any other things that from the lens of um, people experiencing homelessness that we should just be thinking about on this particular ballot? Anyone? Also, this is my cat. <laughs> Yeah, um, I think that's a great question in terms of keeping in mind those issues that are important to you when you're getting into the ballot box. Uh, right now, in terms of thinking about folks that are experiencing homelessness and trying to end and prevent homelessness in Illinois, I definitely think the crucial thing on the ballot is the fair tax statewide, uh, but there definitely could be other things in your local community and other um, measures or laws that um, you should look into and see if there is any other way that you can support um, trying to help end and prevent homelessness. Brandon, do you have your uh, ballot nearby? Um, I can check it out. It also looks like Jim. Uh, did, were you raising your hand? Oh, Claire has her ballot. Good. So the question, the fair tax question is kind of hidden and it's not good, guys. It comes right before the president. So if you voted for the president first, you already missed the question. Very, very sneaky. It's in the blue box off to the side and below the blue box is where you have to fill in yes. So don't skip that part. All the way down here at the bottom in a completely different color. This is president. <laughs> so you can see president and then this is the fair tax amendment and then this is where you vote for it all the way down here. Don't miss it. This is pretty basic. I, I don't know if it'll be illuminating to everyone, but um, our current president has done a lot uh, through his administration to weaken fair housing law. So in terms of keeping folks who are currently housed, but maybe, or, ha or looking for housing, um, helping them out, I would say like ideally voting for Biden is probably the better bet presidentially. Um, it's happy to talk about that more if anyone has questions in the chat. I think something else that people should really take into consideration that we haven't fully felt yet is the fact that as each month goes by and we're not back to normal, people are going, we're going to have more and more homeless people. This is going to become more and more of a problem. I, and even in my neighborhood, you know, I didn't used to see homeless people now, you know, I mean, I have a friend down the street, you know, like just, I see this guy all the time now. And I think that's just going to become more common. Do we have any other questions? I definitely want to lift, I want to lift up what uh, Jim Piketty put in to the chat that there is also a question in Champaign County. Uh, there is a tax levy being debated on whether or not more funds could go to struggling um, communities. Uh, Jim, did you want to touch on that? Yeah, just specifically to Holly's question about like what else is there, um, piggybacking on what Brandon said, like really take a look at um, your local ballot um, because there might be other measures. Um, as, as somebody who works on CCH's staff, you know, we can circle back around to see if there's anything. Um, Brandon and I have had real tunnel vision and thinking about fair tax all day, every day. Um, but, uh, you know, we can also circle back around and see if there's anything else that folks should be mindful of. But um, like the example in Champaign County, they're definitely thinking about a minor increase of about, uh, I think it's somewhere between five to 25 cents. Um, and it can generate more money specifically for at risk and struggling households in Champaign County. Um, I think there was a question that I caught in the chat. What are the next steps in case it does not pass? Um, I think uh, that is a developing situation at the moment. Um, there, in recent news, uh, Lieutenant Governor Stratton uh, said last week and Governor Pritzker reiterated that uh, if it does not pass, they will be looking at increasing everyone's fl uh, flat tax by 20%. So we would go from a 4.95% flat tax rate to a 5.94%. So um, 
So um, obviously the Republicans came back and said, oh, look, now, you know, the Democrats are threatening you <laughs> to vote for it. So it was not a great back and forth. Um, but it is something to keep in mind that they genuinely will have to look at that, um, among other potential cuts and stuff like that. So it's kind of a developing situation. I think they're really, they're really counting on a lot of people to vote for it. Yeah, Does anyone um, I've seen... um, yeah, you found it. You got it, Brandon. Yeah, I was just going to raise up the next question that's been circulating in the chat, which is the idea that if we pass a fair tax, what's to stop Springfield from raising more taxes on more people? And I think what's important to, to note is that Springfield can, as Sam kind of alluded to, can raise taxes already anytime on anyone. The only difference is that right now it has to be raised on everyone at the same time. That with a fair tax, it doesn't change the legislature's ability to raise taxes. But what it means is that the next time they do raise taxes, that it can, again, just be on the wealthy instead of on everyone. Um, and I think that's really important to understand. And also, hopefully, this $3 billion can go a long way to alleviating the budget crisis that's been going on in Illinois for years. Uh, and that as, when a fair tax is passed and with $3 billion more dollars, that hopefully the, that will decrease the need to decrease tax or change tax, increase taxes again in the future. And also seeing uh, fair tax resources, uh, one pager that the associate board put together was also put into the chat by Mary Kate. Thank you. I just want to piggy off what uh, Brandon said just now. So of course, like the legislature can always raise our taxes because that's just one of their powers as government. But um, there have been a bunch of studies over time, not a bunch of studies, there have been a couple of studies done recently and I can link them in the chat, um, particularly from the Center for Tax and Budget Accountability and then the Center for Government Finance Research at UIC, um, comparing flat tax states and graduated income tax states, which is what the fair tax will allow us to become. And graduated income tax states do usually raise their taxes less over time um, because they are getting a bigger portion of their revenue from those folks who can afford to do it more. So even if you're hearing people who are like, okay, yeah, that's great. They have the tax um, brackets for this year, but you know, next year they're gonna come back and raise them a ton. If we get a graduated tax infrastructure, it's actually like less likely um, that that'll be the case. So I'll link those in the chat, but they're really interesting. It's so really exciting news. We actually just hit 400 pledges on our digital pledge form, which is super exciting. That means we got at least 10 pledges during this call. I'm going to throw the pledge card form in the chat again for anyone who hasn't had the opportunity to fill it out yet. And for those who are following along on Facebook, that link is chicagohomeless.org slash pledge card. Again, that's chicagohomeless.org slash pledge card. Uh, and so congratulations, everyone right here. We've already taken a big step in helping get the fair tax passed. And I hope you can join us in taking the next step, which is joining for one of those uh, friend text banks uh, we, where we can pull out our own phones and text our own contacts. And to sign up for that, I'm going to put the link in the chat again. Uh, it's bit.ly slash fair tax volunteer, all lower place. Uh, so again, that's bit.ly slash fair tax volunteer. I see a question about um, any concerns about post office delays. As soon as you get your ballot, if you know who you want to vote for and what you want to vote for, just send it in as soon as possible. I think a really stick it to the man and just go down there and vote if you can and vote early when there's on an odd day at an odd time when no one's there. Um. I don't know if anyone saw, but there was already a three block line this morning at the uh, super site this morning. Um, but that was, but it was like a good type of line. Okay. Um, Socially distanced line. <laughs> but one, one thing the Board of Election uh, is really pushing to is they're setting up early voting and all the other polling places starts on October 14th. And you can, if you did request a mail-in ballot and you don't feel comfortable mailing it in, you can bring it with you to early vote or on election day, um, but you have to have it. Uh, you can't show up if you requested a mail-in one and then expect to vote in person. Um, but then also, if you do fill out the mail-in ballot, you can drop it off. They have drop boxes at the polling places. 
Um, and so, or you can even bring it down to, you know, Washington, you could take an Uber. <laughs> uh, and so uh, there are other ways like where even if you did have a mail-in ballot, you could still, you could still use it, but not necessarily just like drop it in, you know, your mailbox in your apartment building kind of thing if you wanted a little more security. All right, we've gotten two folks that have filled out the friend Hello. text bank sign up form. Hi, did someone have a question? Brandon, just a question. So I'm if sharing. you uh, send out for a mail-in ballot and you don't receive it like in time, how does that work when you go to the polling place? Like, do you have to tell them that you uh, sent off for a mail-in ballot? Say, say mine didn't come in the mail like I expected it to. Uh, so would you... When you go to the polling place, would you have to inform them that you sent in for a mail-in ballot or how would that actually work? So I'm seeing in the you chat. Should have expected to receive it by. So if you're, so I sent in for a mail-in ballot, but you know how the mail is really funny and mm -hmm. may not come in the time frame that you think it should come. You get a little nervous. Right. You want to go to the polling place and you want to vote. What would what would be the process? Would you tell them that you sent out for a mail in ballot and then they would allow you to uh, vote? That you didn't receive your mail in ballot? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, so I just posted in the chat um, a link to our uh, Board of Elections site and they do have a protocol for this. Um, this has happened to, I believe this happened to someone I know in the, for the mayoral election. So if you, there are multiple options you can do if you wanna call because you still want your mail-in ballot and you definitely don't wanna go in person, you could continue to be aggressive about that in the next couple of days because they did start mailing them out. Um, you, another option is you can go to early vote or on election day. And if you do not have your mail ballot, you can say, uh, you can cast a provisional ballot after you complete an affidavit saying that you did not get it in the mail. Um, so you could show, you could show up without the mail ballot and tell them you never received it. And they would but say, that, they should still let you vote. That would be on election day? Would that only be on election day? It could be, it sounds like it could be early voting or election day, but uh, they do give a number that you can call. So I would definitely suggest calling just to clarify. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. And thanks, Sherry, for that great question. So I just want to shout out that we've had two people fill out the volunteer sign-up form, um, but neither of them could make the closest text bank, which is next Thursday, October 8th. Um, so can anyone right now commit to joining us October 8th on Thursday at 6 p.m. to text your friends and family? Yeah, Mary Kate, was that was that a yes? Yeah, awesome. I That's just great. filled out the form, so you got it. Great. I'm gonna send that form in the chat again um, because we only got like 33 days left. Uh, if you wanna be a part of passing a fair tax, this is the way to do it. It's to reach into your own contacts, send them the pledge form, ask them to pledge to vote yes, uh, and so that they make that commitment with you. Uh, and that they learn about it and actually will show up and do it. Okay, um, any other questions, guys? These are some really great questions. I'm glad you guys were so engaged in the conversation. Um, I guess if there are no other questions, in closing, I would um, say that you should join the Associate Board of the Chicago Coalition for the Homeless or, I mean, it's tons of fun, but like, just try to do some good in, in this world. Um, thank you guys for coming and all of the resources are out there for you. Tell your friends, your family, and I think we're done. Question or, I guess ready? Thanks, everyone. I think we had one more question. Oh, wait. From uh, Hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, I do have a question. Okay. Well, 
but it's not a question it's more just like a, a little closing out the fair tax is really important um because like i'm only 25 and for the last 25 years the irs keeps on insisting when i file my taxes to to charge me some type of fee and i, I never can afford it and I've never gotten a tax return back ever in my life. And I've, I've had jobs other than 1099s. Um, so it, it kind of feels like I've been you know, cheated somehow um, along the way with my finances. So the fair tax is really important because I've been working towards like other things um, that eventually will lead me to success and wealth. Um, and I'll have to pay this fair tax, but I won't be ashamed or you know, burdened by it because you know, it was once a point in time and I didn't have any money. So. Um, I'll be voting for the fair tax, and it doesn't even matter what party you want. If you want people to stop struggling, and you want them to stop living in poverty, and doing these drugs, and these kids not going to school, this is how you have to give money back to people who do not have it. Um, so, fair tax is really important. Um, thank you guys for listening, and yeah, thanks for having me here today. Thank you for that. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.